Hey, what's up, guys? My name is the channel. Welcome to episode 66 of Game Programming. So, uh, there are a few changes going on in the uh, in the world of game programming. Um, first of all, you know, as we move on, I've just sort of been thinking over the last few days uh, the direction of this series um, because. Well, when I make games in my own time, I, you know, I don't really think about what I need to teach people. So, I'm just, I've just been thinking about the best way to do this stuff. Um, and there really is no best way. There, there is a way. If it's like, there's, there's no best way because, like, in order to make this game that's based off from the Mad God, there are, there's a long list of things we need to do. Um, and the order of those things, you know, there's no point trying to optimize that order. I'm just gonna teach it in whatever order I feel like teaching it. Um, and I hope you guys are okay with that, but you'll kind of see how that, um, lays out over the next few weeks and months probably. Uh, but we come to a point, we're coming to a point very soon where, um, you know, when I first started this series, uh, at the end of last year, I, I told you guys that, um, uh, like basically you guys would be calling the shots on this game and what kind of game it's going to end up being. Um, and you guys are kind of taking crea creative and I guess directorial control of um of this game uh and by you guys i obviously mean you guys collectively as a group uh and um i just asked you guys that over the next few weeks when all this comes into effect um you actually just think kind of objectively and you know agree with each other um you know, it's going to be the kind of system, I'm probably going to, if I have time, I'll probably make some kind of app where you guys can, can vote for what you want, um, as well as express your own personal opinions and everything. Um, and I hope that you guys will be able to mutually agree on, on some concrete um, design elements. Uh, keep in mind that obviously, you know, if you, if you really want a specific, um, you know, game design element implemented that no one else seems to want uh it's not the end of the world um first of all just think of maybe another way that it could be merged into the majority's um aspect of this game so just think of abstract ways to include it into the game and then maybe you can get the support of your peers okay something like that i'm just like i just want to tell you guys that you know over the next few weeks just try and you know think a bit objectively and you know with a clear head um, because again, you guys are going to be the ones who are going to be guiding this game into a direction. Um, anyway, enough blabbering. Uh, today we're going to talk about the mouse. So one thing about Realm of the Mad God, obviously, is whenever you move your mouse, and I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, hopefully you can, you might want a full screen for, um, for this video. Uh, basically we move our, we move our mouse somewhere and then we click and our player shoots in the direction of wherever our mouse is. Right, um, and we're gonna basically start implementing that today. So, first off, um, we need a mouse object, right? If we go over here into our um, game constructor, you see that we've got add key listener, and this thing is basically like the pinnacle of um, of listeners in in our current setup here, right? We're extending canvas, so canvas has a bunch of methods like add key listener. It's also got add mouse listener and, and focus listeners and everything. Um, so this is like our starting point, right? A lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, they, um, they, I guess, they just forget about this. And so they make their mouse class or whatever, they, they, they go on, they do all of their input stuff, and then it doesn't work. And they, they sit there and they're like, I don't know why it's not working. And nine times out of 10, it's because they just have not added it into the canvas, okay? You must do that. So that's why I like starting with it, okay? Let's add a mouse listener. Now we don't actually have a class yet. We've only, got, we've only got a keyboard class here, and we will make a mouse class in a minute here. Um, and we'll just call it mouse, and we'll also add a mouse motion listener. All right. So the mouse listener, as you might imagine, um, listens for the buttons that we press, and mouse motion listens for basically. Well, it just picks up the location of the mouse and all that stuff. Uh, mouse. Okay. And we'll actually create the mouse object right here. So mouse mouse equals new mouse. We're not going to do it outside um, over here. And the reason is all of its methods are going to be static, so there's no point. So let's create the class, and we'll create it now in our input package, which we conveniently already have. Okay, sweet. So mouse, the mouse class implements a bunch of different things. Well, two. The mouse listener and the mouse motion, motion listener, right? 
Um, and actually, I think I saw this question the other day. Um, you can implement multiple interfaces, but you cannot extend multiple classes. All right. So you can you 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 in Java you can only extend one class, but you can implement as many interfaces as you like. I don't think there's actually a limit. There might be, but there's not. I don't think there is. Um, all right. So uh, yeah, that answers your question. In other programming languages, you can extend multiple classes, but you can't in um in Java, which is probably better that way, to be honest. Okay, sweet. So here are all of our methods um, from these two interfaces. All right? So we've got mouse dragged, mouse moved, we've got all this stuff. Let's just quickly clean this up to make it look a bit better. Um, and then we'll get onto it. Okay, there are there are only a handful here that actually interest us. Like mouse exited, mouse entered, we don't need that stuff. Uh, we might in the future, but I don't think so. So let's make a private static int called mouse x, and we'll set that equal to negative one. So that's just like its starting uh, value. Public uh, private static int mouse y equal to negative one, and we'll make one more. Private static int mouse b. Oops. Equals negative one. All right. So why negative one? Um, instead of zero, for example, uh, because technically, like our mouse could actually be at zero comma zero. So in other words, if we print out our mouse coordinate and it says zero comma zero, we might be like, okay, well, maybe the mouse is actually at zero zero. But we know the negative one, but negative one is not, you know, an existing coordinate. We can't possibly put our mouse at negative one, negative one. So that way we know it's correct. Same with the button. Okay. So that's the button. And these two variables will basically just store the location of the mouse on the screen. I shouldn't say on the screen, on, in our window, on our game, all right? Not the entire screen, just our game. So um, over here, just under all this stuff, actually, let's do it above all this stuff. Um, we'll make a public static int, um, and we'll call it get x, and it'll be a method that returns an integer. And all we'll do is we'll just return mouse x. That's it. Okay, and let's copy and paste that two more times. Oops. So get Y and get button. And these will basically just return, oops, make that B, make that Y. These will just basically return these things. Um, and obviously we have to make these static even though they're private because, um, well, if we don't, we won't be able to because this, the method is static so we can't refer to a dynamic um, field. Okay, so the way that this works is basically the reason we make all this stuff static first of all is because we can only have one mouse, right? There is no way we can have two mouse in instances on the same computer, let alone in the same game. So there's it's, that's completely like there's no there's no point making this you know have be able to have multiple instances. So you might as well make everything static. That'll make everything really clean and um, and technically correct as well. Um, and secondly. Um, we need to actually set all these values to something. So in mouse moved, right, that's, that, um, that method is basically invoked whenever we move our mouse, right? Um, and so I guess it's a good place to probably, you know, update our variables. So whenever we move the mouse, let's set mouse x equal to e dot get x. And when we, and we'll do the same thing for y, right? And that's pretty much it, that's done. Um, we'll talk about drag and everything later but that's not really important now. So mouse pressed, right? Whenever we press our mouse, that's probably a good time to actually set our mouse, bu mouse button to E dot get button, all right? And that's all cool, but one thing we have to do with press that we don't have to do with these two is, you know, whenever we press our mouse, it's just gonna set that variable equal to the mouse button that we press, but when we release our mouse, it's still gonna remain, you know, that button, obviously, because we're not setting that to anything else, right? So when we release our mouse, we want to be able to, you know, I guess, um, reset the mouse button. So we'll just set it to negative one. Otherwise, if we press our mouse button and then release it, the game's going to, you know, think it's still pressed and it'll keep shooting on forever pretty much. So that's one thing that you need to fix. Um, and that is it, right? So we'll talk about all that other stuff later. Um, that is actually it. Okay. So let's go back to our game here. Let's save. And now everything seems to be awesome. So let's just test this out. Scroll down here. So those are the three points, I guess, when you're adding a mouse listener, right? Make sure you actually add them. That is step one. And step two, make a class that implements the two interfaces and then just set variables accordingly, okay? And here I've got getter methods to, um, 
to actually return values, okay? So let's just take a look at how this works now. In our render thing, let's just over here under our um, set font thing, which we're not actually using, so let's get rid of that. We might use it in the future, but you know what? We, we probably will use it in the first future, so I'll just leave it there. But j dot uh, fill rectangle at mouse dot get x. So in other words, we'll just um, we'll, we'll just draw a nice little square wherever our mouse pointer is, just to test out if the mouse pointer works. Um, and we'll just make it like what 32, 64 by 64. So it's the size of a tile. I don't think our tiles are that big. Maybe not, um, but yeah, so that should work, right? So basically it's just filling a rectangle and the X and Y coordinates are the coordinates of the mouse. So let's just run that and check that out, all right? So now our um, white square is, let's just quickly make this a bit more aesthetically correct. Just so that it's in the middle, looks nice. Okay, so now you see that basically our, you know, this white square is drawn wherever our mouse pointer is, which is awesome. So that is, I guess that's the beginnings of actually implementing the mouse. Now we actually know, um, now we actually know where our square is. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now we actually know where our mouse pointer is on the screen, which is awesome because then we can calculate which direction to shoot in. Okay, let's quickly ch uh, test the button because we haven't done that. Um, and this is why I left the font thing here. So draw string button plus a uh, mouse dot get button uh, 80 80 okay so button negative one if we press our left mouse button we get one right if we press our right mouse button we get three and middle mouse button we get two and it even works for my other mouse buttons I'm on my razor mamba mouse so like five and four um, but yeah so there you go We've got all of our mouse buttons here and everything works awesomely. So yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, in fact, if mouse button does not equal negative one, then we could just draw it just so, we, just so it only pops up if we actually press something. Okay, sweet. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and I will see you guys next time where we'll probably continue the mouse stuff. Later guys.